some people look at the Australian landscape and they think it's harsh and inhospitable. But plant lovers know it is an absolute treasure trove. You just have to know where and when to look. As I explore the Castlemaine Diggings National Heritage Park, my tour guide is Dr Cassia Reid, a local ecologist and garden designer who specialises in the amazing species of this unique forest. Just within a, a few square metres, we have so many different species growing. I mean, for instance, yeah, look at this gorgeous orchid that's come up from nowhere. And right beside it, the myrnong, the yam daisy, climbing up out of the ground and unfurling. We call it upside down country here because they effectively turn the whole landscape upside down in the hunt for gold. It's extraordinary to think of, but when you look back at photos of this landscape, there was hardly any trees on the hills at all. And so this here is all regrowth. What are the main species of this forest? It's dominated by the beautiful ironbarks, these dark trunked gnarly eucalypts, and then we've got this rich understory. At the moment, your eyes are caught by the wildflowers. There's a huge diversity of peas and wattles. And coming up at the moment are lilies and orchids, all these little herbs that cover the ground. And there are relationships between these plants, aren't they? Yeah, the orchids have fungi that are they're helping them get nutrients that, um, out of the nutrient-poor soil, and they're also sometimes tapped into the plants around them and helping them get those valuable sugars. Because if you look at the orchid, they don't have much leaf, and they're relying on this community to keep them going. The peas are also a real feature of this landscape this year. I feel like it's the year of the pea. We had some great winter rains and this year they've just gone off. And when, when you come out in the late afternoon with the sunset, it actually looks like the bush is on fire. It's just this incredible fiery glow. And there's a whole lot of different species of pea that actually have the same colour, so you can get a bit confused. People call them the generic egg and bacon, but once you get your eye in, there's a big diversity of peas out here too. A lot of these plants, because they're growing on, as you can see, skeletal soils. There's hardly any um, litter or, or deep, rich soil layer here. And so they have a lot of strategies to cope with no nutrients. So the peas and the wattles, they've actually got their own little factory on their roots to fix nitrogen out of the air and give them that essential fertiliser that many of us are adding to the garden. They've got it right there on their roots. This is another one of my little favourites tucked in. It's another gorgeous little um, shrub that pops up at this time of year. You'd never know it was here in summer and then it's just grown up with the, the winter and early spring rains. We call this one Pink Bells. And right next to it, one of, one oh. of the most amazing and iconic plants and again with an incredible strategy for surviving in tough conditions. This plant is actually a little carnivore and if you look closely at the tips of its little leaves you can see they're sticky. They've got these little sticky glands and what they're doing is they're catching little gnats and mosquitoes that are um, coming past or landing on them and then they're devouring them and it gets its nutrients out of those insects. And they will have some beautiful flowers quite soon. They have little pink blossoms. There's, there's one just budding up over here Millie, just coming out, this tall sundew. There's quite a few species of sundew out here and people don't realise, but this one's a climbing one and you can see it's also using those sticky leaves to hold itself onto the rock or it will hold onto the plants around it and climb up through. Cassie, we moved not far, 10 mm. or 20 metres, and the vegetation's totally changed. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I know so many new species have just come into the grounds layer here. And also a bigger shrub layer. It's yep. Lots of Daphne heath and we've got some beautiful um, downy grevilleas through here as well, which went down the slope. And then just a host of billy buttons carpeting the ground here. And they're, of course, a daisy, which yep. a lot of people wouldn't realise, but, you know, daisies renowned as being great providers for so many insect and bird species. If you're out here on a calm, warm day, you'll see all these little native bees. Um, and little hoverflies and different flies all coming and visiting these daisies for nectar. And you can see that, I mean, it's just a storehouse of food here for them. Oh, wow, you look even more closely and there's even more species here. 
It's just worlds within worlds. I mean, we saw so many species within a few metres when we're looking at the daisies and lilies, and then we look in a few inches and we're seeing s such a variety of moss and lichen right down at the micro level. And you wouldn't know that they were there in summer. Like, they, they all um, shrivel up and, and close down. And then as soon as you get rain falling, they're called resurrection plants, and they just send out their leaves, open up, and the ground goes green. How many species do you think we're seeing here? There's a, um, a moss called Barbula calicina, another little cute one called Entosthodon. There's a Polytricum, and then we've got a bunch of um, lichens, so maybe up to about 10 species. And they're only the ones you can see, Millie, because if you actually take, your, say, a knife and you just lever off a little bit of the earth, there's all these other things that you can't really see, but they're holding the soil together and stopping um, particles falling away. And so there's threads of algae, threads of um, fungi, all holding it together. So it's quite a community in a small area. What can we learn from these landscapes? One thing we can learn is to maybe not look to the showy, big foliage, big flower plants for beauty that often require a lot of water and nutrients, and to appreciate the subtler things that cope with a harsher, dry climate. The smaller leaved things that have a huge amount of beauty um, in their delicate flowers and their delicate foliage, and they're built to be resilient. It doesn't matter where you live in this beautiful country, there will be nature to explore and enjoy, and of course to learn from for your own garden. But it is more than that. This place, it's known as the gold fields because of a moment in its history. But I think we all know where the real gold is. Just make sure you tread carefully. Mm -hmm.